Hi, my name is Julia, aka Makeup and Mystery, and today I'm going to be dyeing my hair purple. As you can see, my roots are freshly bleached. I did not do them myself. I got them done because I don't trust myself doing my own bleach, and my natural hair color is extremely, extremely dark. I'm pretty sure my natural hair is black. I obviously cannot do my bleach retouch myself. I can't see the back of my head. It's way too stressful. I think if I had lighter hair, like a, a lighter, like a blonde or like a very light brown, I think it'd be easier to do your own bleach. I wanted to do the purple myself because my previous hair that I did, I'll put pictures here of my hair looked like in June, which is when I first dyed it purple. I did that myself, so I figured I might as well continue to do the purple myself. It's not as hard if you're just putting color on top. You just have to make sure you're saturating the hair and everything. And I'm also going to be going through some of the products I use to maintain my hair. While it's purple, I use like a purple shampoo and then I use a purple conditioner meant for purple hair, so I'll get into that later. I'm also going to be trying out this brand, they're called Lunar Tides, and they sent me these actually. They reached out to me on Instagram, and I was really surprised because I've never been sent hair dye before. They're a smaller hair dye company, but I think a lot of people have used them because I was looking up on YouTube. There's a lot of videos of people dyeing their hair using this brand. So they sent me three different colors. The darkest one is called Nightshade, and I'm not going to like do super close-ups on the colors of the dye because Lunar Tides, I think the brand has a YouTube video showing all their different purple shades and what they look like on an extension so it can give you an idea of what the colors look like or the swatches on really light hair. And this isn't going to be a super professional hair dyeing video where I detail how to dye it. It's just going to be a video of me dyeing my hair, explaining how having purple hair has been so far and if you want to see my other video where I dyed my hair for the first time I used a different brand I used Arctic Box I mixed together shades purple rain and then girls night I used more of purple rain though so the color that I ended up getting was more purple rain because girls night is very very pastel and light and might not last very long but purple rain lasted a while on me it did fade and I'll get into that once I start dyeing my hair, I feel like I shouldn't cover everything in the intro because I want to, you know, be talking while I'm dyeing my hair. This color is called Nightshade, and this is what I'm going to be mainly putting on my roots. And then they sent me the shade Plum Purple. I think this is the shade that I'm going to put on my ends. But I do have three containers of this shade. While I have one container of Nightshade, I have all my materials laid out. I don't have a crazy amount of stuff and I'm probably going to be using my hands to apply most of the color but I think around the roots I might use a brush but I'm not completely sure because last time I tried using a brush first and I just ended up applying it with my hands so we'll see. Laid down a non-white towel that's very important. At first I'm going to section my hair but I'm going to start with the roots because my roots are still a little bit yellow so I want those to stay on the longest but I also don't want to spend a really long time doing this so i'm going to try to quickly get everything together i think i'm going to be mixing two different colors and i'm going to keep mixing as i go but i'm not exactly sure how long these dyes will last i might end up redying it and i'm probably going to get my roots done again sometime in december i do have a smaller brush that i was thinking of using around my root area i got sally's it's just tinier and more precise. And I'm going to get some along my scalp and along my forehead. It's just inevitable. I'm gonna get some on my ears so don't mind that. It's just gonna happen. This is not super thick dye. It's pretty runny. I'm just gonna go by small sections so I make sure I'm coating each individual hair. I just kind of pull the hair through and make sure like I'm not missing any pieces. I'm going to get this a lot of places. This is not gonna be a very clean application. Let's get that straight. <laughs> 
this dye, I can already tell a little really does go a long way. Like I'm not even using that much and like it's coating the whole thing. So that side is kind of done. It went pretty far down, which is not what I was thinking was gonna happen. But honestly, I don't think I'm gonna have to use very much of this dye. Once this color fades, I'll probably just be able to touch it up with the dye I already have. Cause I have a lot of these bottles from how that side went. It was super easy for me to coat my hair really without using a crazy amount of dye. I think mostly it's going to be a bluish purple because I'm able to use a lot of this nightshade color and that's how the purple rain color looked when I first dyed it and that's exactly how this shade is kind of showing up on my roots but it's doing a really good job at covering the yellow which is what I assumed because it's purple especially a super dark purple and like that tone of purple especially but I'm interested to see how this fades because I'll put some pictures over on the side of how the arctic fox colors faded on me first it was a super dark purpley blue color and then after a few washes it started fading a little bit to like more of a pinky purple but it was still pretty dark and pretty saturated and pigmented and then got to more of a lighter pink purple and then eventually it started fading kind of weird and then that's when i started using this purple shampoo i'll probably show it at the end after i wash it out and not like have my hands like this so i'll be able to actually like show it i have this conditioner that i got at ulta and i can't remember the brand but i'll obviously just tell you the brand when I show it but it's this conditioner that's meant for purple hair they have them in every color I'm pretty sure and there was like a wall of them at Ulta and I was like this is just what I need so I got it and it honestly it's worked so well to help my hair fade okay so I just did the this half of the top part and ran out of, or I didn't run out, but I was getting low on the nightshade color. So then I mixed in the first container of orchid purple. And orchid purple is a little bit lighter than nightshade. I mixed in the nightshade along with the orchid purple. So it still kind of blends together and it's still kind of that bluey purple shade. So, and then I'm honestly not going to use Plum purple. I might mix in a tiny bit of it for the ends, but I'm mostly going to just be using that orchid purple and then the nightshade up top. And then at the bottom is going to be all orchid purple and maybe a slight bit of this plum purple, but this hair dye goes so far. And I'll show you like once I dry it and style it and everything, like how long my hair is. So if you're thinking about buying from this brand you can get an idea of like how much hair dye you'll need for your hair length my hair is not super long but it's also not like short short i know the scrunchies this is not like super professional by the way i think it's gonna turn out really good because i did the same thing the last time i dyed my hair like i clipped it all in weird spots and you know <laughs> i didn't section it like super professionally like like you would when um, you actually get it done by someone else. <laughs> but when it's on your own and you're, I mean, at least I'm using gloves. I would hate my life if I wasn't using gloves. But one thing I noticed with the orchid purple is that it's a little bit uh, more diluted than the nightshade. Like the nightshade was like dark. It was like a deep, deep purple and it was super thick, but the orchid purple seems to be a little bit more, I don't want to say watery because that's not a good word to use when describing hair dyes, but I guess it was just a little bit more um, runny and less thick and maybe a tiny bit more diluted than the nightshade was. So if you are 
wanting to have like a super dark root, I think that you should go with just using the nightshade color instead of mixing in some of the other purple shades. And also I'm trying to go pretty far down where my roots were. I had a lot of growth from the last time I got my roots done, which was in March and it's now October. And my hair grows pretty fast. So, but I'm trying to take the dye down a little bit over to where my roots were because I don't want there to be kind of like a line. You can see like right here, this is yellow because that's my regrowth. And then this is what my hair was. It's extremely light. It's pretty much platinum, but with like a purple kind of weird tint going on. I'm really trying to coat that yellow. And if you're a hairstylist watching this, please do not, um, no, you can judge me actually. <laughs> like I totally would judge myself if I was watching this. When I did the Arctic Fox purples, I got some around my forehead and on my skin a little bit, but it washed out when I rinsed my hair. So I don't know how this one is going to be because it seems to be a little bit more pigmented than the Arctic Fox was. Dyeing your own hair is so difficult because I can't see past like this. Like this part, I can see the very, very front, but even the sides and, and obviously you can't see the back. Um, it's just, it's so hard to dye your hair in like an organized way when you're doing it yourself. So honestly, when I do colors, and I put color on top of my hair and I dye it like this, my only goal is just to saturate my hair. <laughs> because the one thing that we don't want is there to be spaces that didn't get dyed. Like, that's all I really care about. And I know, I know this looks bad, I know. Um, but as long as I'm not missing any pieces and the dyeing process is a little bit messy, it's fine. Honestly, it's fine. <laughs> I dyed it purple initially in June. I wasn't going very many places, so it wasn't that big of a deal for me to dye it that color because I was like, well, I'm just staying in my house most of the time. And yeah, I went like a few places here and there, but not very many because back in June, that was when stuff was still predominantly closed or very little things were opening and um, now I'm in school again and I, I go to classes two days a week not every day two days a week I have in-person classes and I, I had to go two days a week I have in-person classes and I go other places during the week. So I definitely go more places than I did when I first dyed it. So I'm a little bit nervous because, I don't know, I just get anxious when I have kind of a bright hair color because it is very bold. And even when I had the lavender, when it was super faded out, it had a bunch of roots. Like it wasn't freshly dyed at all. I had a crazy amount of roots. It didn't look good from my perspective, but I think to people who don't know much about dyeing hair, which I don't know, you know, the, as much as somebody who's trained to dye hair and is a hairstylist, but I've dyed my hair many times and I know, you know, little things here and there about dyeing hair, but I got, I still got a lot of um, comments and compliments on my hair, even after it was super faded and super grown out. So I'm just like, what are people going to think when I dye it like this bright ass? <laughs> purple again but I, I've dyed it this color before it's not like I've never had this color but at that time I was not going very many places so okay so I have it fully applied right now and as you can see I was able to get most of it off the sides of my face I just used a little witch hazel on a cotton ball and just went around and it came right off so I'm not worried about it staining my skin which is a really good thing I'll show you the back if I can I 
I'm gonna wash this out. I'm gonna let it air dry probably because I don't wanna use too much heat on my hair and I'm probably going to curl it tomorrow morning and then I'll fully style it so then I can take pictures of what it looks like fully styled but I'll come back on camera when it's wet just to see the color. It's gonna look just like this. Um, so yeah, it's pretty dark but that's what I wanted. I have a top on by the way if you were wondering. This is how it turned out. It's very blue tone, but it's more like a blue purple. It's still really wet, so I'm not exactly sure what it will look like dry. And I don't think I missed any spots while dyeing it, so my ear is still a little blue. It wasn't too difficult to wash out, just how any dye is. But yeah, I really like this color. It's super dark, but that's what I wanted. And you don't really see a gradient so far. There might be when it dries, but I only did that mixture of the two lighter shades towards the end. But most of the hair was already coated in the original shades that I did, so I think it all just blended together. It's super shiny. So this is what my hair looks like fully dried and styled. I curled it this morning and it's just been brushed out a little bit. I look so pale. I think my light is really, really bright. Maybe it's a little bit bluer than when I first dyed it purple in June, but it's roughly around the same kind of level of darkness. It's like I can have dark hair again, but technically it just fades back to a lighter purple. And then I guess if I never touched it up, then it would fade back to blonde. Because obviously, like, the hair down here was super light, so the dye just, like, immediately took to it. And, but, like, you know, it's still very, very purple on top. And you can see, like, the underneath parts are very blue purple. It's weird, in some lighting, it looks more purple. And then, like in this lighting, when I'm filming with my ring light in front of me, it looks very blue. And I kind of like that, like it's almost like you don't know what color it is. So if someone said I had blue hair or purple hair, I wouldn't mind either way. I think it's obviously going to fade to more of a purple. And especially once I touch it up with that purple plum color, that I only used a tiny bit of that on the ends. And you can kind of see the difference on the ends. But it's kind of hard to tell because it mostly all just blended together all of the shades I used. I have no idea how this color is going to fade on me. When I first dyed it purple over the summer, it didn't start like fading fading until I went in a pool and when I went to the beach. I don't know if it was the chlorine or salt water or something, but it made my hair fade probably the most when I went swimming and got it wet. I wanna maybe research if there's ways that I can not make it fade when I go swimming. Like I live in Florida, so it's more of a common thing to do year round. Me and my roommates are going to a water park this weekend, and I think I'm gonna put it in French braids. I'm not gonna wash it until then because it's only in a few days, but I'm gonna put my hair in French braids, which is usually what I do when I either go swimming or go somewhere to the beach, whatever, so my hair doesn't get messed up. So I don't know if that'll help it not fade with all the water and chlorine. Oh, let me show you my purple shampoo that I use and my purple conditioner because that was what I wanted to talk about, about how I kind of maintain the purple. And I think if I continue to use those, it will help with it fading. Whereas if I was just using a regular shampoo and conditioner that doesn't have any purple in it, it would fade not as nicely. So the shampoo that I use is from the brand Clairol and it's their Shimmer Lights Shampoo Blonde and Silver. This I've used before when I was blonde and I'll put pictures right here. I think I talked about it in my last hair dyeing video but it made my hair when it was platinum more of like a silvery almost like a very very light lavender in some lightings made it that kind of color just on blonde hair so I don't think this really does anything to put purple back into my hair because it's mainly for blondes and my hair is already like an extreme amount of purple so I mean 
I just use this because it's better than just using a regular one. Honestly, like hair chemistry and just like hair textures, hair coloring, all that stuff really, really interests me. I don't want to be a hairstylist, but I kind of want to learn more about just hair in general, just for my own benefit, my own interest to help myself and you know, to educate other people. I kind of want to go to cosmetology school. I don't, I don't know all the details on that, but I do want to work as a makeup artist more than I would want to work as a hairstylist. But if I went to cosmetology, I mean, you can, you can do makeup. You can be a makeup artist without going to cosmetology school. There's benefits to getting your cosmetology license, and I am considering it. Obviously, I wouldn't do that for a while because I'm still in school or college even though i'm not going to be a hairstylist it's beneficial to know about hair and the ins and outs of coloring hair it's so interesting to to see and observe it in your own hair and other people's and i feel like a lot of people don't understand like you have to bleach your hair before you dye the color like this and i can dye my hair this dark purple but it's eventually going to fade from washing it and then like the temperature of water that you use on your hair like that affects it and what kind of dyes like what kind of developer like what's in developer what chemicals interact with these chemicals like what not to mix together to have like bad hair mishaps and everything like that i don't know it's just it's just really interesting to me so i don't know it's something that's on the back burner obviously in my mind but i'm i it's not something that i'm like oh no i would never do that like i feel like i could benefit a lot from going to cosmetology school and learning about hair and makeup and I and once again I haven't really researched it so I don't know like which programs are more geared towards makeup and which are more hair I know you learn both and talk about both but I think most people that go to cosmetology school do it for more hair purposes if you're just like a freelance makeup artist on your own and marketing yourself you don't have to have a license in cosmetology and obviously just to do makeup on yourself for Instagram and YouTube and you know post about it and stuff like you know you can be self-taught it's, it's not like a requirement or anything you, there are things in the makeup world the more like working makeup artist world that you need a cosmetology license for I don't think you you don't have to have one to work at Sephora or also or Mac or Morphe or any of those but there are some circumstances that I don't know that much about because it's just, I've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure on my channel, but there's not a ton of transparency within the working makeup artist world. There's a ton of transparency within like the beauty gurus and um, the makeup artists on YouTube and Instagram and more so on the brand side of things, like working with brands as an influencer, but there's just not a lot of information or maybe there is, but it's not like, information that's just readily available alongside of the beauty guru makeup. It's like you kind of have to seek it out and you have to seek out looking for working makeup artist content and like researching that. So I have a lot on my plate and that's why I'm like really stressed out right now. But I don't know, it's just something that I think about a lot in my future. I know this is literally a video about me dyeing my hair and I'm like, should I go to cosmetology school? It's not like I'm actually considering that right now. It's just a thought in my head that I'm like, mm, I think I could actually really benefit from doing that, but I'm not even sure like what programs there are and how much it costs and how long it is and what the intensity is like. Anyway, the conditioner I use, <laughs> it's from the brand Kara Color, K-E-R-A Color. And it says it's called Color Plus conditioner which I guess is what they call their conditioner it cleanses and conditions but also it deposits color pigments and maintains hues to prevent fading and it does exactly that uh, the purple color of this is a little different from this shade of purple but it obviously still all just blends together if you're using a conditioner that actually deposits color into your hair like I know the brand overtone I've always wanted to buy from them, but I just haven't. Maybe they sell me some of their purple conditioners. Manifesting that. You have to like be careful that you're not just putting it in one spot. Sometimes I'll put a lot of conditioner in the back of my head, like towards the bottom, and I'll forget to do like the sides and like this area. I'll see that the 
purple isn't super dispersed evenly but that was when my hair was super faded and light it's not gonna do that with this because my hair is so dark and purple now but when my hair was lighter and it was fading I guess just if you're using something like this make sure that you're evenly dispersing it so then you don't have random streaks of purple here and it's it's fine if you have a little bit of color variation within your hair like it doesn't have to be all one color as long as it doesn't like stand out or anything it started fading really weirdly when I was like going to the beach and going swimming and doing a lot of that and it just started fading to this like weird blonde kind of muted purple it's kind of an ugly color but then once I started using this combination it turned more into a lavender so it took out the almost like pinky purple tones that the arctic fox hair deposited and faded over time and then it made my hair more of a light lavender but it wasn't like a pastel lavender it was like a true lavender using these two and i really liked that color on me like honestly if it wasn't for having all of my root regrowth i think i would have been comfortable keeping that color and just using these two to you know consistently maintain that color but since my roots were so grown out i was like well i need to get them done and then just like fully dye it the dark purple again yeah i really like the brand lunar tides and i'm excited to use more of their shades because i still have some left so maybe i will make another video using the other shades but the reason why i wanted to make another video of me dyeing my hair was one because i had to dye my hair it was getting so you know grown out and just faded and bad but two my first one that i posted is my most viewed video it was the third video i ever posted on this channel and it's my most viewed it has like almost 800 views already and i only have 100 100 something subscribers so i thought that was really interesting well i think it's because people like to watch hair dyeing videos on youtube even i do i'm mainly a makeup channel but if i do dye my hair i think it's fun to film it and talk about my hair journey my hair process and yeah so i really hope you enjoy this video here are my social medias i post pretty often on instagram tiktok and twitter if you'd like to follow me on there i don't really have an upload schedule um, when I uploaded. Last time I uploaded was September 17th and it's now October 14th. But I have a lot of videos that like I've filmed and halfway edited. They're just not fully done. So, you know, it happens. I, I don't I don't do YouTube as a as a like thing thing, you know. So I don't I don't really care. I'm not like, oh my god, I didn't upload and then it's like, well at least I'm filming something. Got this video filmed and I got my hair dyed like that's an accomplishment right I think it is so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye